Hello and welcome to another episode of Life Stories Markham. With Life Stories Markham, we delve into stories of inspiring people within our Markham community, people who are known in their field of work or by their passion. I'm Michael Heap, and I'm joined by my co-host, Nilesh Hathi. And uh, go ahead, you have more to say? Well, I just wanted to remind people, <laughs> in case they're watching on YouTube or listening on their podcast provider, that uh, we please ask them to subscribe. And, and that way you'll be notified as soon as any new episodes are dropped. So we haven't been on the air together for a while, so we were like, what do we do now? <laughs> exactly, it's, we're resting. That's right. So today our guest is Renee Dayton. Hello. Hello, it's Renee. <laughs> and Renee is a, uh, is a hosted on Shopping Channel. Yes. She volunteers. Yes. She's a performer by heart. <laughs> Welcome um, to the show, Renee. Thank Thanks. you for having me. I, I was delighted to be asked. Great to have you, Renee. <laughs> and, and you have described yourself as a natural performer. Absolutely. And, and I believe this knack goes back quite a ways until perhaps as early as when you were four years old. As early as I was four years and old. Just to remind you of what happened when you were four years old. Sunrise. Sprinkle it with dew. Sprinkle it with dew. Cover it with chocolate and a miracle or two. The candy man. The candy man. Oh, the candy man can. Oh, the candy man can. The candy man can cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Makes the world taste good. Okay, Who can take a <laughs> rainbow? That is my father. That's your father. Um, my dad. Uh, my dad was the most incredible uh, man. Sadly, lost him um, during COVID. And um, was he also a performer? He, he, he was a closet performer. <laughs> he, he, I grew up a uh, Salvation Army church, and if you know anything about Salvation Army church, it's the singing and the band. And my dad was the band leader. My mom was the choir. Uh, director. So yeah, so it, it came, I came by it honestly, but my dad was just a comedian naturally. He's British, very dry sense of humor. And uh, um, yeah, he, he was always that ray of sunshine in, in the room. So what was your childhood like? Growing up in a musical family, very creative, very fun family sounds like. Yeah, I, you know what, it was really interesting because um, I, I always say I grew up with June and Ward Cleaver. I, I, I literally had the Cleavers as my parents. They were the best parents out there. Um, uh, involved with um, myself and my brothers. Um, I have one brother that is two years younger and then my mom thought she was going through the change of life and found out she was pregnant when I was 18 years old. So uh, my other brother was 16, I was 18 and surprise, we got my baby brother. So. Um, they never missed a sport or an activity. Um, sometimes one parent was going in one direction, the other was going in the other with the kids, but, but right. they were great. So you were practicing with your father on the tape you just heard. Yes. And I believe you were also about to perform yes. for a rather large group of people. Tell us about that performance. So um, on my first solo, I was four, and um, I was at a dance studio called the McDonald Twins, and um, I performed on stage in front of 1,500 people. Wow. And so that was me just learning the song and my dad was trying to help me learn the song and so that was us practicing and my brother was two at the time and so if you hear the rattling in the background, that was my mother trying to keep him was quiet. was he on stage as well? No. Is <laughs> he a performer? My brother, it's interesting, my, my one brother really wasn't into the performing. Um, he, both my brothers, very much athletes. Um, my youngest brother though ended up going on to performing arts school um, but was Athlete of the Year and is in the Canadian College Hall of Fame um, as a, an athlete for soccer. So, um, and both my brothers are like six one and six four. I don't know what happened to me, but. Uh, <laughs> and what college? He was at Kalen was at Seneca College. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. So performing, it's mm -hmm. in your blood. Yeah. And what would you say performing has done for you as a person throughout life? Yeah, it's interesting because I always say the arts is such a great thing for anybody because um, if you can speak in front of a room and have confidence when you're younger and not be afraid, it doesn't matter what you end up doing in life, you know, in business or anything, you have to speak in front of people. So that confidence um, that I learned as a child not to be afraid and not to, you know, be fearful on stage, didn't matter if I ended up in performing or not, it was, it was something that was, you know, a really good gift in teaching confidence. So. 
I encourage sea arts to anybody. Yeah, you know, it's uh, every time somebody asks me, I mention some people, and they say communication is the key to mm -hmm. life almost, right? Mm -hmm. If we articulate, communicate, and talk to people, it's a fantastic skill to have. Absolutely. Every, that should be a mandatory course in school, I think. I, um, I taught at the Montessori school when, mm -hmm. for when my kids were young, and um, I did uh, the dance and the drama program to pay for their education so that they could go to Montessori. And um, I had them do speech arts starting in grade one and the parents thought I was crazy. And I said to them, listen, they're not scared yet. Yeah. So if they can do it, you know, even if it's 30 seconds when they're in grade one, they'll, they'll be able to do this forever. And it was amazing what, you know, even grade ones could do yeah. with yeah. a little bit of guidance. They were, it was pretty awesome. Right. So singing, dancing, yes. and next step, led you to a beauty pageant. <laughs> yes. Um, you were Miss Toronto, mm -hmm. I believe, and you also, therefore, qualified for Miss Canada yes. beauty pageant. Yes. What an experience that must have been. Pretty amazing experience. Um, uh, I was representing the Metro Toronto Police Amateur Athletic Association, and um, with that platform, I got to be the anti-drug campaign spokesperson. Mm -hmm. um, I also did a lot with Make-A-Wish. Um, but I went on to the Miss Canada pageant, and the girl who ended up winning ended up being one of my very dearest friends. Um, she's godmother to my children. I'm godmother to her children, and we are still friends to this you day. You say hi to her right now. Hi, Robin. What's she's uh, in Australia yeah. now. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And where was that Canada, Miss Canada pageant? Was it here in Toronto? Was it, it was. It was at CTV, right. and um, uh, all the contestants from all over the country came. We stayed in a hotel. Uh, for a week and and we did interviews and we learned of course the dance and the song routines for the show and it was a lot of fun Yeah, I worked at CTV for many years so I know many people have talked about working camera and whatnot on that and then one of my good friends is was the music director Rob Breckberg I totally time. remember that name. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so he's, uh, he's a music scorer and he's now in LA and you know writing music and well, That's incredible. From wow. that. Yeah, incredible small world yeah. very small yeah. world <laughs> So all of those things we've talked about, the performance part of your life has led you to what you do now. Mm -hmm. You work for the Shopping Channel. That's true. Which, in case people aren't aware, it's a channel that reaches millions of homes in Canada. And so maybe tell us a little bit about what you do right now for the Shopping Channel. So I'm a TV host with the Shopping Channel. I started out as a guest there. Uh, one of my neighbors in Markham had a product that was going to air and didn't have anybody who could uh, you know, do it on air. And so he said, you've done TV before. Do you think you could sell this on air? And two days later, I was an ionic air purifier expert. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I started. And um, you know, I was there as a guest for a while. Uh, and then their, you know, the main boss of talent asked me if, if I would like to be a host. And the rest is history. So, yeah. so what makes a good guest on? The shopping channel. What makes a good guest? Um, I love working with guests that are spontaneous. Um, I like people who are fun. I, I, I don't like to be too serious. I, I really like to have a good time. So, um, And for me, I like somebody who is as genuine as can be because I think being genuine and um, as down to earth and relatable as possible, the, the better the better it comes across. And you should check out Renee's Instagram because there's a lot of fun on Renee's Instagram. Yeah. Fun, fun, yeah, fun, fun. Yes. Yeah, I am not serious. No, that's there's right. zero. It's, uh, it's 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 fun to watch her. Excellent. She has lots of energy, yeah, for sure. And you know, talking about working with people that are fun, mm -hmm. I understand you got to work with the incomparable Joan Rivers, oh. uh, comedian, extraordinaire, actress, mm -hmm. producer. Uh, what what kind of experience was that for you? So Joan Rivers, everybody knows her as the comedian, and she, no matter what she did, she was very funny. Uh, but Joan Rivers had a heart of gold, and people didn't know the really soft, beautiful side uh, of her. I, I went through a divorce at one point uh, working at TSC, and she took me in her dressing room, she sat me down, she gave me the most you know, inspirational pep talk and told me that I was going to be fine and that my kids were going to be fine. And, and uh, she, was, she was just incredible. 80 years old, she would work, she'd come in, she'd do Friday nights uh, till midnight with us. She'd get up, she'd do Saturday during the day. Then she'd get in a, a car, they'd drive her to, uh, up to Rama. She'd do her one-woman show on stage for an hour. 
then they'd drive her back to the hotel and she'd be back on air with me the next morning. Like she was, she was a machine, uh, but she was, she was a prankster too. She, yeah. she actually had me cartwheel on air. <laughs> wow. Okay, tell, you gotta tell us about this. Cartwheel, yeah, come on, give us some more information. Uh, it was actually my very first time on air working with her and it was a big deal to get to be on air with Joan Rivers. And we were selling things and every time we sold out of something, she was getting excited. And she's, she was like, well, you're a musical theater performer, so the next thing we sell out, Renee's going to tap dance. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'm going to tap dance. It's Joan Rivers. Who's saying no to Joan Rivers? And then it was like, okay, she's going to sing us a song. And then, and then she looked over at me and she said, can you cartwheel? And I said, yes. And she, she goes, well, you're going to cartwheel. And I went, here? And she said, yeah. And I, and I said, you're going to get me fired. And she looked at me and she said, honey, I'm Joan Rivers. You are not getting fired. I will take you with me to QVC, which is the sister station in the States. And you'll make four times what you make here in Canada. I got her back. I cartwheeled and I made her. I said it was all one-sided, not fair. So I said the next sellout, she had to chicken dance, and she did. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Crazy. So will you cut real? Right now. I'm in a dress. Uh, I have an excuse. Uh, uh, <laughs> I still can, though. Just saying. You can? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I can't do anything. Maybe you can find that that's, that's my marker of, like, if I get too old is when I can't cartwheel uh, Okay. Anymore. We will have you on again, and you can cartwheel. Okay. All right. I'll have to wear pants. <laughs> That's okay, funny. so another one of your, your big passions, I understand, is animal rescue. Yes. And you were involved in a, a rescue uh, facility in the island of Roatan, mm -hmm. which is just off the coast of Honduras. Yes. And so maybe tell us how you became involved in an animal rescue facility in Roatan. Well, um, during COVID, we were a little bored in lockdown. And we binge watched maybe too many episodes of Caribbean Life and House Hunters International. <laughs> and the next thing you knew, we ended up with a vacation property in Roatan. We bought virtually. I have a friend who lives there. His wife is a realtor. And we ended up buying um, virtually and um, started an Airbnb in, in Roatan. Um, when I finally got to the island, I fell in love with it. I heard of an animal rescue on the island, and it, it is a poor country. Uh, they don't have the same sort of um, health standards for animals that we have here. And um, I started to bring back a couple of animals from Honduras to Canada and got them adopted out. Uh, and then, sadly, the woman who ran the rescue walked away and abandoned all of the animals. There were 300 plus dogs, 200 something uh, cats, and seven horses. Um, I found out what was going on. I started to contact a bunch of people and there's an amazing group of volunteers that all have come together and uh, been working to what we call rescue the rescue. Mm -hmm. um, the facilities are very bad. Um, they are full of disease. Uh, the animals are overcrowded. In some cases, 40 animals in one pen, which has caused aggression. Um, and so what we've been trying to do is get them healthy, bring in vets, um, get them adopted out, and do the best that we can. I got word yesterday, Humane Society International is now coming in. They're bringing 12 vets to help us with a behavioral expert and all kinds of things. And since August 7th, 2nd, we have adopted out 70 animals. Wow. Yeah. Now, where does love for animals begin? Always had animals growing yeah, up. Animals? Always, always, Pets, always, dogs, always. Cats. Dogs primarily. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, three dogs now and two cats. Yes, what are your names, your pe pets? Okay. So uh, the oldest dog in our house, her name is Marley. She's a Sharky. She's the little one. She's the boss. Um, just before COVID hit, we got two dogs. Um, they are both doodles. So Murphy is um, um, Australian Labradoodle, and Finley is a Golden Doodle. And they're four. And we have two cats. They're Scottish Fold Munchkins. So they have the little short oh, yeah. uh, legs. And one of them has the folded ears. Uh, that's Dobby and Ziggy, their brothers. That's a lot. Yes. <laughs> five kids, five pets, five kids. you know. <laughs> and you have step kids, right? I, I do. Yeah. I do. Um, blended family. Yeah. But uh, my stepchildren have been with us for, well, my stepson, um, I guess we're on nine and a half years now, and he's the only one of the five uh, still at home, and the only boy. So the rest okay. are four girls. And what's it like? 
a step family. Being a step blended, family? Blended, blended uh, family. Yeah. Okay. So here I will say it was very challenging at yeah. first um, because two sets of parents, two sets of different rules. Um, when we got custody of uh, my stepson, uh, it wasn't expected. And so we were all of a sudden thrown together. And, and it wasn't easy at first, but I will tell you um, with you know persistence, and working my husband and I as a team and the kids the kids are great now they love each other and it's really really nice and and I would say um, they all get along now and and uh, it, it's pretty amazing they support each other and the step part is That's actually right. gone in oh, our good. family now yeah, we're yeah. not step anything we are gotcha. my brother my because, sister because uh, a lot of families unfortunately go through this now right yeah. Yeah. So what bit of advice you would have people with just starting out in this process? Patience. Patience? You really need patience. And, and you, need to, you need to give your partner grace because you've partnered one way and they've partnered another way. And you can't expect them to parent the same way that you have. Um, you know, I was a single mom with three girls. I picked and chose my battles. Uh, you know, whereas my husband was a lot more structured and a lot more set. Um, he was way better at discipline than I was. I was a marshmallow. And so we had to learn to balance each other out and we had to give each other grace um, and, and understand that we were never going to parent the same way. That's good advice. Wow. Yeah. So now you're at a point where there's the number of pets in the household outnumber the number of kids. Yes. <laughs> because many of them have moved on. They have. Yes. Yeah, they have. Um, I have my eldest is in Guelph. She just uh, finished her master's degree and she's, uh, she was working on mental health and drug addiction. Um, she backpacked through Southeast Asia and is now looking to try and get her full-time career job. Um, my uh, stepdaughter McKenna is downtown. She works at the Toronto Star. Uh, she's a digital analyst and uh, she has won many awards already. She got picked up right out of um, a, a York Sheridan program and She's doing really well. My middle one, Kayla, is up in Bob Cajun, um, helping their dad flip a house right now. <laughs> and um, my youngest daughter is Georgian College. She just graduated and she was doing carpentry and um, cabinetry and she's been picked up right out of her program at school and she's gonna be doing epoxy and furniture. Wow. And my son has started Seneca College this week. So one left. <laughs> yes. Wow, that's a very diverse group of children. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, creative and analytic. And, and all of them have an arts element yeah. Yeah. to yeah. them. My, my oldest daughter uh, growing up, uh, she was the voice of Sally in The Cat in the Hat, knows a lot about that with Martin Short. And she oh, did that for years and years and years and years and years. Yeah. Wow. Did you know, I found out today, that the Prime Video is mm -hmm. releasing a documentary on um, Mr. Dress Up, Ronnie Coombs. Really? Yes, it comes out Thanksgiving. Okay. It's amazing. It's I, my, my, my cousin today. went to school with his kids. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. Small world. Yeah, small, small world. world. Yeah. 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 Uh, because it's, yeah, so it's funny. I saw this on my LinkedIn. And then all my friends like was like with CBC as well, and people were like, "Oh yeah, I worked with him. I worked with him like so many years ago." But yeah, I think it's. I heard he was good. a really, really, really nice guy. Yeah, everyone says what he saw on TV was what he saw yeah. inside TV, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's really Interesting. So you had a bit more time on your hands with less kids in the house, mm -hmm. which may have led you to doing some work with the Univell Theatre Company. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah, um, so my youngest good. daughter Cassidy, who just is up in Georgia, she actually started with Univell Theatre Company. Um, and she did it, uh, the first year she did it, it was in Wizard of Oz they were doing. She was one of the munchkins, she was new to the company, they didn't really know her. Um, the next year I, um, I thought it would be fun for the two of us to do something on stage together. Not so sure she thought it was such a fun <laughs> idea. <laughs> I thought it would have been great, but uh, she, she may beg to differ, but we did, they were doing Beauty and the Beast. I have a video from her notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were doing Beauty and the Beast, which was the last musical that I did um, up until I was six months pregnant yeah. uh, with my first. So okay. I kind of was like, and I, and I said to her, you know, can we? And so she ended up playing Belle and I ended up being Mrs. Potts. So okay. that was kind of fun. Excellent. Um, and in fact, one of our viewers, uh, Kim Narduzzi, who probably you met yes. at, uh, at the Union Mill Theatre. I love Kim. And she recommended you for, to be a guest on our podcast. Thank you, so. Kim. I'm very honored that you, that yes. you did that. Now, uh, Kim's son, Joe, yes. Yes. went to school with my daughter, Cassidy. They were in the same vocal class. 
and we hadn't found a beast yet yeah. for the production. Yeah. We hadn't found a, a guy who could sing it, and she dragged Joe yeah. uh, and had him in the in the production, and that's where I met Kim yeah. was because of Joe being the beast in Beauty and the well, Beast. Well, uh, Michael and I, we co-chair a curling league. Okay. A, a even curling club where we met know Kim from as well. And we had Joe come uh, after one of our boss because he sang it for the. He's dinners. amazing, isn't He's amazing. he? Yes. Yeah, amazing, amazing. It was, amazing it was a course. royal theme. Yeah, and he sang uh, "God Save the, the Queen. Queen," and he sang lots of uh, songs as well. Amazing, amazing, amazing yeah, voice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Joe is a very, very talented young yeah. man. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. So Renee, we've talked about a lot of upbeat, positive. One writing. more question. Oh. Are you producing as well now? Uh, yeah, I produced last year. Um, we did Into the Woods, and uh, there was a big turnover, kind of the changing of the guard last year. And um, I just thought, you know, we come out of two years of COVID. We were a little out of practice and stuff, and I thought, you know what? They're going to really need support in the back end this year. And so I stepped off stage last year. So I am auditioning this year. I did kind of miss it a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, performing and producing, but you're just a little. Performer, just a I'm guessing performing, right? Uh, well, I have to audition like everybody else, so we'll see what and happens. who makes the decision? The, the director. And, and the vocal. The director this year is, <laughs> is I don't have an, I do, I, I know him very well. Uh, one of my, one of my longest friends, um, I started working with Mark Cassius when I was 15 years old at Canada's Wonderland. It's where a lot of Toronto musical theatre yeah. performers got their start. Um, he went on to uh, be, do a lot of Broadway musicals. In fact, he played, um, Judah in the original production with Donny Osmond who sang the Benjamin Calypso song um, and Mark was one of the nylons wow. and so um, he is he is the director this year so we're really honored to have that caliber and somebody who was actually in the production of Joseph directing for us this year. Now is your husband involved in the theater as well? So my husband actually did get involved which is oh. hilarious because he is a he is a businessman, and, and I mean, he is a, a quite a big businessman. He, he deals in, a, in a, a, he has a very big job with lots of employees, and I had no idea that my husband was a closet performer <laughs> until we got together, um, and uh, he did join the company, and he did uh, Cinderella uh, when we did Cinderella, and then last year he was the narrator in Into the Woods. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and what's his name, first name? Tom. Thank you. You might as well say his name, right? <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we've touched on various as mm -hmm. aspects of your life story. Yeah. And one of the aspects, and we've talked about this before, yep. is a rather difficult story to tell. Yep. I have no problem talking about it. Exactly. And that's why we're going to bring it up. It involves this pretty serious hormonal condition mm -hmm. that you've been battling. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe you can tell us and, and the audience about what it is, how you've been dealing with it, and where it stands today. Um, so uh, a few years ago, I started putting on weight, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I, for lack of a better word, I was blowing up. Uh, my face was getting really distended. Uh, my arms stayed the same, my legs stayed the same, and my whole body was going rounded. I was going to boot camp five days a week. I was eating nothing but lettuce. And and I just was, it, it, was, it was bad. And I knew there was something wrong. I, I, you know, my background is a dancer. I, I, you know, 18 years of dance and professional training, I knew that something was up. Um, and I kept going to the doctor saying something's wrong and they would say, no, it's menopause. No, it's this. I'm like, I'm not sitting on a couch eating bonbons, doing nothing, like something is wrong. So the long and the short of it is I was diagnosed with Cushing's disease. Um, it is a disease that not many people know about uh, and uh, the overproduction of cortisol in my body uh, for me was caused by lack of sleep and stress. Um, many people, it's if they've had steroid use or things like that. I had never used anything like that, but um, lack of sleep and stress, going through divorce, uh, all the stresses of, of re you know being a parent, and and I don't let it out. I internalize, uh, which is not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so I know <laughs> now. Um, it caused a tumor on my pituitary gland and the tumor caused all my adrenals uh, to go crazy which caused the weight gain and um, it started to attack my bones um, and you know a variety of things so I ended up having to have neurosurgery 
pretty phenomenal yeah. what they what they were able to do. They went in through my nose, took the tumor out that way. So, yeah, the technology is amazing what they can do. Um, so, uh, knock on wood, I um, am free and clear. Um, I do have to go back yearly uh, and have a scan every year to make sure it is possible but highly unlikely that it'll grow back because they believe they got got it all and all of the margins when they took it. It's not cancerous, um, but but it can. And when did you have that? Where, where did you have this? Where? So they went through my nose. Oh, sorry, where? Oh, uh, uh, Toronto Western. Toronto Western. Toronto Western, yeah. Doctor? Uh, Dr. Fred Gentili, uh, renowned, yeah. yeah, renowned, renowned surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people come from all over the world to train with Fred Gentili. And sadly, uh, he just passed away I want to say two years ago of a brain tumor, uh, and his his surgeon was one of his students, but his tumor was um, not operable. Um, they tried, uh, but they could not get it all, and, and sadly he passed away. And the most interesting thing about this man, he was just such a teacher that as he was going through it, he said, I've been able to teach how to fix it. I've never been able to teach what it's like to be a patient. And now I can teach my students what it's oh like to be a patient. Gosh. Yeah, pretty remarkable, remarkable man. Because when they did that to you, that mm -hmm. surgery, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not a norm, it's not an often surgery. It's not like no. a stent, putting a stent in or something. Right? No. So it was about very skilled. Very skilled. Yeah. Um, and, and he had quite a few students when I was there. And it was intimidating. I, I you know, I, I went into the room and we're not just talking like a table of tools. It was, think of an island in your kitchen, like a breakfast island right. full of tools. And the surgery itself was probably, I think it went over six hours. Um, and, and then I was in ICU for a couple of days. But, but uh, very, very grateful to the staff there. They were, they were pretty amazing. Now, I saw the video that you posted on YouTube when you, had the, mm -hmm. when you came back. How was it we come back to work and all that? It was pretty amazing. I will say, um, before I was diagnosed and with the weight gain, it was really hard. People, people can be cruel and people, people can be tough. Uh, the majority of people at TSE and, and, and our, I call them the TSE family, the, the, the viewers who watch every day, were kind and supportive and wonderful. But you're going to get the odd one who's not so nice. Um, but when I came out with my diagnosis, the, the support was incredible. And when I came back... I will never be able to ex describe the feeling of support and love that I got from people coming back. And I, I just felt really welcome back. Uh, TSC was phenomenal. They were so good during all of it. Rogers and the Rogers family was amazing. They were very supportive. They were, they, you know, what do you need? You need to come back gradually. How do we help you? And I didn't come back gradually. I just went back to work. <laughs> I, know, I was bored at home, let yeah, me tell yeah. you. So Renee, you, you sound like you persevered with your doctor, mm -hmm. you became your own advocate, Yes. Uh, which you, you've said is, is a very important thing when you're going through something like that. It, it, because it's a, a rare disease, um, at first when I, when I had it, I, they were like, oh, it's this, oh, it's that. And I knew I had Cushing's disease from any of the research oh. that I had done. I was missing one marker, and because I was missing the one marker, they wouldn't diagnose me. And I finally got them to agree to send me to an endocrinologist. And I, I had to beg and plead, please send me to an endocrinologist. And when I went there, I said, I, I walked in and I said, I've got Cushing's disease. She's like, well, let's test your thyroid. Yeah. And I said, can you, you can test whatever you want, but could you please do the test for this? Yes. Right. And mm -hmm. it came back and the results were off the, off the chart. So I, I will always say, we are not doctors, we're not medical sure. experts, but Absolutely, you have to advocate for yourself, and I absolutely have no shame in saying that I got in with my doctor, I got my surgery so fast because I begged on social media, mm -hmm. and uh, the viewers are the ones who got me in with the doctor that I had and helped me get my surgery as quick as I did. So, yeah. Yeah. So, how long have you been TSC now? I have been a host for almost 17 years, and I was a guest three years before that. So 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been in theater for all your life. Yep. <laughs> What's next? Anything next? Yes. I, I do have a plan um, because I know that I will never just be able to retire and sit still. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we are building up on uh, Georgian Bay, and so eventually we will have a house on Georgian Bay that, oh. uh, that we will retire to. But my long-term goal is I want to volunteer with the theater company. 
Um, I have a goal for them to have their own space and their own facility, their own building right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we currently have been renting places and, and I would really like to see Unionville Theatre Company have its own facility. What I love about the company is it's accessible to all. Um, so we have kids who are on the spectrum. We have kids who um, uh, have been in wheelchairs. We have uh, kids that are just, you know, the square peg that doesn't fit in the round hole. We have kids that are just, you know, uh, have a passion for love of music. And I would like to see that continue and I would like to see it evolve into younger and younger and younger. Right now we're nine to 90, as we say, mm -hmm. but I'd like to see a program in Markham that's for the younger uh, kids as well in theater. So. I'd like that the to happen. The Cloud of Marco Theatre does something like a discovery mm -hmm. program, right? For, mm -hmm. for younger kids, it was fantastic as well. Yeah, and they, they, they run it every summer. Yeah. Um, so we are asking, we've asked the town if, you know, if they can help us with the building, we will join in their summer programs and, and because right. uh, they fill up so fast. Sure right, yeah. And so we would like that opportunity to be for even more kids in, in Markham. So mm -hmm. that, and then in Roatan, I would like to work with the rescue. Um, and I also would like to start a theater program out in Roatan for the kids. Um, they have cruise ships that come in, and yeah. so if the kids could perform for the cruise ships, they could raise money for their families. Wonderful. So, okay, so, so, so actually, I want to say one yeah, more thing yeah, because sorry. you've done a lot for the community. You, you just explained all the many things that you've done. <laughs> uh, it's way more fun than working. <laughs> it is. But you've also received a little recognition. A little for what bit. You've done. And so we want to point out something. Yeah. It's called the Queen's Jubilee Medal. Mm -hmm. And we've got a picture of you being presented with the medal. We'll put it up yes. later. But it's given to people who've made a significant contribution to a community within Canada. And this honor was bestowed on you, Renee. Mm -hmm. So maybe tell us a little bit about that experience. Oh, that, that was a huge honor. And, and I uh, received that. Um, I live in Cornell. Uh, many people in Markham know where Cornell is. And when Cornell first started, it was a brand new concept and a new idea. So there was a lot of glitches. Um, and I sat on the Community Ratepayers Association and eventually became president of the Community uh, Ratepayers Association. And um, I ended up doing a ton of work with the town of Markham um, and really helping to advocate for um, housing um, that's affordable for all and, and um, advocating for our community. And that's that's really I, I I believe it was Frank Scarpetti that nominated me for wow, the awards. That's awesome. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. So thank politics you. in your future? You know, I've thought about it, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you know why? I really love working with kids, and I really love working with the animals and. I know they keep asking you know, me at the time. No, I don't know about that. I, li listen, Frank and Jack Heath consistently yes. says, "Come on,", Come on. Exactly. For sure. but uh, but no, I I kind of like volunteering and doing the things that I'm doing. Sure. They, I'll leave that to, so to somebody that else. So all volunteering, <laughs> all of you people, the Weiss Group, for example, who uh, was sponsors the Flat Rock Theater. Well, yes, yes. Oprah Day started. The Unionville Theater building. We need okay. a building. Yeah, yeah. Come on, get it <laughs> out now. Yeah. We need a space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So any builder who would like to donate right. that, right. I'll gladly name it after you. <laughs> there you go. The call is out. <laughs> is it time, Michael? I think it's time. It's time. Yeah. yeah. It's time. For. Okay, so this is one of our most popular parts of the program. I, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I might be a little afraid of what you might ask me, but we're, we're ready. Okay, <laughs> so these are, you know, rapid fire questions. You know what that is. I don't have to explain to you. Just Ten questions. All yeah. right, perfect. And maybe more. <laughs> okay. Phone call or text? Phone call. Ooh. I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Things can get misinterpreted in text. You're so much better to talk to somebody because you hear the emotion and intent in their yeah. voice. Yeah, there you go. Not a surprise, but very, very well said. Your favorite song? Oh, man. Okay. Um, oh, Holy Night. Oh, holy okay, let's hear it. I don't think oh, I know it. Oh, come on, really? I don't think I know it. Oh, holy night. The stars are brightly shining. You know that song. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. I, that, I, I don't know why I have just always loved okay. that that Christmas Carol. Okay, now this is going to be difficult for you. Okay. Mm. 
Right now it's 3-2, but cats or dogs? Dogs. Ooh, I okay. love my cats. <laughs> yeah. They're not listening. Don't listen to cats. I <laughs> love <laughs> my cats, but dogs but I are, but dogs yeah. dogs Ooh. have my heart. But I do love my cats. They're so cuddly. They are. We have a chocolate lab. Yeah. My dogs, my dogs are naughty and they're funny. <laughs> so I that just, makes it, interesting. I, I, it makes it interesting. I like naughty, but I'm scared of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Renee, movie night or dinner date? Hmm. Hmm. Dinner date. Dinner date. More yeah. social, more interactive. I mean, I like movie night too, but, but dinner date, especially, you know, good food. I, I'm a yeah. foodie. I yeah. love yeah. good food. So yeah. Does your date get to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> my husband actually, if you met him, you would think he's a fairly quiet guy. But once you get him going, no, we're good. But there must be moments when you've been, maybe you've been hosting for hours and speaking on camera. When you come home, do you just want to maybe not speak? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, you guys would both know what that, that's like as well. When you're talk, 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 and you, you do get home, sometimes you just need to. Yeah, sure. I yeah. talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, First album you ever purchased? Oh wow, Sean Cassidy. Of course. Oh. Um, yeah, the Do Do Run Run. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Probably, I think that would. Uh, yeah, that would probably when be. I it. learned to ski. That was a song I was always playing when I learned to ski. Sean Cassidy. <laughs> Sean Cassidy, a name from the past. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be your favorite. <laughs> okay. Meat pie. Or oh brown come on. Pie. <laughs> <laughs> pudding, pie. Meat, Meat pie, pie or, or apple pie? Oh, apple. So apple. you're more of a sweet than a savory girl? I, yeah, I do love sweets, although I make a mean turkey pot pie. Ooh. Yeah. Like That's what you pudding? do with leftovers. Is it like meat pudding? Like <laughs> no. Stop it's it. like a chicken pot pie, but you know when you have all those leftovers I'm with... I'm I have no idea what that okay. is. Okay. <laughs> well, when you have turkey leftovers for days and days and days, you make turkey pot pie, you yeah. freeze it, so then, you know, a month later when you're not sick of turkey anymore, you can... I know what paneer pie is. What's oh. paneer pie? With paneer. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> paneer pot pie, we could call it. Oh, there you go. Are you going to make it for us? Sure. Okay. There's one in the freezer now. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, your go-to snack? Chocolate. Chocolate? chocolate. You come home chocolate. from work, sometimes late, and you're eating chocolate? Yeah. 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 I love uh, Chocolate with peanut yeah. butter is like like yeah. the bomb. Yeah. Excellent. Um, what is, you, you talk about a lot of talents that you have. Mm. What about your hidden, is there a hidden talent, Renee, that we don't, we're not aware of? I love to cook. I oh. love, 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 love to cook. Okay. Is that so. what your friends would know? Not know? Uh, my no. friends would know that. So who, what yeah. would they not know? What would they not know? Mm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm a pretty open book. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them everything. I really don't hide a whole yeah. lot. <laughs> okay. So what was your talent in the, in the Canadian pageant? Ms. I Canada? sang. You sang? Yeah. What did I you sang. sing? Um, mm, mm, mm. I think I sang... I think I sang the Jazz Hot. Right. Yeah, from Victor Victoria. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay. Your childhood nickname? Nene. Nene? To this day, it still works. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Renee, yeah. Nene. It's the last part of your name. Nene. Nene. Renee. Nene. Nene. Well, there's a dance for yeah. me to Nene, because, right? because little kids couldn't say Renee. Right. So it, it became Nene, but which has become, like, my nieces have all called me Nene or Auntie Nene. Yeah. And I've told my kids that I will not be a Nana. I'm just going to stay Nene. Isn't there a Nene song or something like that? Yeah, I think there is. Yeah. Do the Nene. <laughs> okay, question number 10. Mm. What is the one person you would like to meet who you've not met yet? If you could. Oh, Anybody. Okay. Mm. One person that I would like to meet. Mm -hmm. Can they be dead or alive? Sure, sure, absolutely. I would have loved to sat down and had tea with Lady Di. Okay. Diana, Lady Diana. Yeah, I, uh, maybe something else, but you know, sure. that, that I think she deserved it, something else. <laughs> <laughs> she had a story to tell. Yeah, I, I, think, much of it, I think it would have been fascinating. I think right. it would have been fascinating to really hear her version. There's been lots of other depictions of what went on, right. but I would really, I think it would be really interesting to hear her side of things. Okay, one add on. Mm. One person has influenced your life. Oh, wow. My father. Yeah. My father, yeah. My father was, 
there's not a person on earth who didn't meet my father who didn't love my father. And my father's lesson to us kids was to be kind. Um, and, and to always, which is where my volunteering comes from. My father was always giving back. My father always, if, you know, if he had the last penny in his pocket, he would give it to you if you needed it. That's who he was. And, uh, absolutely hands. I know that's kind of cliche to say that, but honestly, my father is definitely one of the biggest influences in my life. Excellent. Now, uh, as we leave, Mm -hmm. we're getting ready to wrap up. This has been so much fun. But Thank you for having me. One advice you have for people, performers or just, you know. People have artistic, artistic streaks in them. Yeah. Maybe you want to explore yeah, that. Uh, yeah. Well, I always say be yourself. Um, that's really key and really important. Don't try to be any, I, I, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. Uh, <laughs> you know, like just be <laughs> yourself. Um, and don't be afraid to go for it because what's the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't happen. But if you never tried, you won't know. Um, so, you know, just have confidence in yourself, go out and do it. And, and with every step that you take, you learn, um, and it's okay to fall and dust yourself up and get back off up again. Good words of wisdom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thanks thank you for having me. Thank you so much. We're talking forever. We're working hard for your dry space. We will have you back. Right. Thank you so much. With a cartwheel. <laughs> with a cartwheel. I'll have to wear pants. Thank you very much. And again, for the people out there, we hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. And uh, please go out and check our website, which is uh, www.lifestoriesmarkham.ca. You can email us with ideas, or if you have a guest that you think might be interesting, please send that to us as well, ideas at lifestoriesmarkham.ca. And whether you're also listening to this as a podcast or watching it, once again, we remind you, please subscribe to our channel, and that way you won't miss a single episode when we have new episodes coming out all the time. Just a reminder, the program is produced by Neelash Hathi Media. You can reach the incomparable Neelash at neelash.hathi at gmail.com. And again, we hope to see you again for our next episode. Thanks for watching. Hey, one more, Michael. Oh. We have one life story for us. Oh, we Not do. us, but you, Michael. Last time you saw Michael, he had glasses on. So, Michael, what happened? All of a sudden, you're like, you could see everything. I can see. This is the first episode where I've ditched the glasses, laser eye surgery, which is originally um, uh, put on by, by cataracts that I was diagnosed with. So the cataracts are gone. I have new lenses. I also have new vision. I can see everything. The glasses are gone. It's been 50 years with glasses, and I don't miss them at all. It's, That's awesome. It's freedom. <laughs> and uh, the camera likes that, too. Just, you know, <laughs> no reflections. <laughs> so you're next. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.